Kamandu. Kamandu, would you think? Well, welcome to tonight's discussion. We are here introducing to you a new segment called Kingdom Couch Talk. We're very excited. Being the month of February, we're going to be discussing issues around love. And uh, I have a group of exciting young people with me here. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> yes. They seem more older than I am, but we praise God for them. And we're going to just be discussing some issues regarding love and, and find out where the minds of our young people are as it relates to love. Our topic for tonight is what is love? Uh, can we find a definition for it? And if we can, how will it change our lives if we have better understanding? So I'm looking forward to the discussion. Well, welcome guys. Thank you for being here with us. Let me kick it off by asking you. Uh, what would you say is love? What is love? Love for me is an affection, a strong affect affection towards someone, like putting their needs before your own needs. Awesome. Anyone else? What do you think love is? Love for me is a feeling, an expression, and a passion you have for something or someone. Anyone else? <laughs> Love is something that you feel or like someone that you keep close to your heart. All right. Uh, now, let's, that is so interesting. Let's look at what the Bible says about love. Are you ready for this? Yes. 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 <laughs> uh, 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 what I've discovered is that a lot of people have no idea what the definition of love is. Even... They, they, people can tell you what it's not they can tell you what it does but a lot of times there is not a concrete definition that that once you understand you can look at someone and say that is love demonstrated that is love you understand and that's what we want to get to it's interesting that uh, we use the word love loosely in our society I love my dog I love pizza I love my mother. I love my music. We use the word love so casually that we have lost the essence of it. And, and, and the sad thing is, in the English language, it is so limited. The Greek, the Greek word for love, there's actually four definitions that I want to give you. And, it, and it's kind of interesting. So that when they say love, they got four different definitions for it. The first definition of love, I have it in my notes. Young people, say amen. 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 <laughs> the first definition of love is the word eros. Eros is that love between a boy and a girl, husband and wife. It's that attraction for one another. It's the initial things that draws you one to another. You understand? You don't just like everybody. But there's one particular girl, you look at her, your hands are getting sweaty. Huh? <laughs> Young man. <laughs> you look at this boy and you're like, oh my goodness, something is happening to me. That's that eros that, uh, that initially brings you together. Right? But then the second one is what we call phileo, which is brotherly love or friendship love. You have a different type of love for your friends than you do for your girlfriend. Is it me? Can you see there's a friendship love that, that you have. These are my homies. We're together. We do our thing. It's friendship. Then there's a third kind of love which is what we call storge, which is family love. The love you have for your mother, your brother, your sister. It's a different type of love. 
Even though with English we say, I love my mom, I love my friends, I love my girlfriend, you're using the same word, but there's three different dimensions to it. So storge would be the love I have for my brother, my sister, my mother, my cousin. That's, that's a different, it's a family love. But then the highest form of love is what the Bible talks about. It's agape love. It's the God kind of love. It's a love that's unconditional. It doesn't have reasons. Every other love has reasons. You are my girlfriend as long as you keep me happy. But mark me dom, I don't love you anymore. Do you see there's conditions attached to eros. F friendship, love, the same way. There are conditions. Once we have an argument or disagreement, I don't, you don't know my friend anymore. We were friends once upon a time. It breaks off. Storge, how many families do you know that don't talk to each other? Uncles and cousins. It's been years they don't speak to each other because it's all conditional based. But God's love is on another level. When God says, I love you, He says, I love you full stop. No reason. You can't outbad Him. You can't sin so much that He stops loving you. I don't care what you do. He will never stop loving you because He loves you. That's it. But now, here's the challenge, young people. We go, we're going to look at what the Bible calls, what gives us the definition of love. Understand, the truest thing about you and I is what God says about us. The truest thing about anything is what God says about us. This should be our standard for life. Forget the world's definitions. Forget what the world thinks or say. If you're going to honor God with your life, you need to do it His way based on His word. Because this is the truth. Amen. 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 Let, me read, let me read Ephesians 6 and then we're going to get on to our discussion here. Ephesians 5. So. Am I in the right place or am I confused here? Ephesians 5 verse 28 says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. I want you to see this. God says here, Paul is writing to us and he says, A man ought to love his wife like his own body. Then he says, He that loves his wife loves himself because they're married so they are one. Right? And now he gives us, For no man ever hates himself hates his own flesh you don't hate your own body do you 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 don't if you're hungry you go and eat you you do what you you satisfy you isn't it and you want to look good when you leave the house ladies you juice yourself up and everything because why you value you you're not just gonna take yourself out there looking like <laughs> Velapi or whatever <laughs> you don't do that you, you, you understand he says but watch now here he gives us the definition for no man hates his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it even as the Lord does the church two words nourish and cherish now let's break it down simpler to nourish mean to feed isn't it nourishment is when you fed yourself so you as an individual, you, you nourish yourself. You, 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 you feed yourself physically. You, you look after yourself. You pamper yourself. You take care. You buy yourself nice things. It's all about nourishing yourself. So in other words, you, are, you, you, value, you value yourself. You, you appreciate yourself. You nurture something. Have you ever nurtured a plant? You take care of it. You, you take out the weeds. You make sure it gets enough sunlight. You make sure you, 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 you water it. It's called nourishment. It's called providing for. You provide for yourself. So the first thing, the first part of a love definition is to provide. Isn't that like God? He provides for you. Look at this. There are people on earth today, they hate God. Yet He gives them oxygen every day. God says, oh, you hate me, I'm taking my oxygen. Oh, you hate me, I'm taking my sunlight. Can you see his love? He's, he decided to love you, and therefore love provides. And whether you hate him or not even pay attention to him, nothing. It's, it's there every single day without failure that God is providing for you. So if you say you love someone, are you providing? Ah, we're getting to definitions now. <laughs> The second part of that word is love, uh, nourishes and cherish. The word cherish means to protect. 
If you cherish something, you protect it. Jewelry that's valuable gets put in a safe. You don't let something that's valuable just lay all over the place. Huh? If I can give you a thousand rand now, oh, we'll see you cherish. <laughs> You'll be like, hey, I can't just walk with this money just like so. I must go put it somewhere. Because it's, it's, it's something that you protect and p- preserve. So, love by definition is providing and protecting. So, if he says he, like, he loves you, what is he buying? Is he providing and is he protecting? In other words, not only physically must I protect you, I have to protect. Uh, uh, if someone is attacking you with their words, and, and all, I, there must be that type of a protection for you. See how, how, how God is, He does all of that for you. He's protecting you. I mean, you're still alive and well after how many things that happened to you in your life. Whether you gave him another thought or not, he protected you. Because that is what love is all about. Now, <laughs> let's get into this. If you say you love someone, you're going to love and cherish, nurture, provide, protect, preserve. Correct? Now, Based on that, what is the difference between love and lust? <laughs> okay, um, what do you think now? Seeing that you understand what love is, so lust obviously has to be totally opposite to it, correct? So what would you think? What would you say? Okay, uh, love, l- lust is... Um, it's going to happen for that particular moment after that it's done. That's what I feel and think about. Does that, is that nurturing a relationship when I lust after somebody? No. Is that, is that being giving towards them, protective of their emotion, protective of their virtue? No. Lust is more self. Self. That word. Gratification. <laughs> <laughs> love is can you see the last another another easy way to understand lust is called pressure so what the devil will do is put pressure on you and the pressure can be so overwhelmed that you think you can't live without it I have to have this like like drugs when someone is addicted to drugs they lust after it because it's so overwhelmed the craving for it that they'll do anything to get that's self certification So, if I get the drug, but in the process, I've hurt people, I've stolen from people, I've taken advantage of people, I've abused relationship, I've destroyed relationship, because lust is only there for self. Are you seeing that? Uh, uh, if, if you, if, if, if a guy wants to sleep with you, it's for self, because if he loves me, why doesn't he marry me? Very true. <laughs> Alright, again. Let me ask you this. Uh, 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 how would you know someone loves you what would you be looking for as a guy that would tell you a, a, a girl loves you? Uh, if she's um, open with me, she like she doesn't hide secrets and like if like I I want a girl that's not gonna if I'm with my friends then she's gonna pull away. And then when I she's with our friends, then I must pull away. If I we must all be together, you see. And that's what I look for in a girl because most girls they they somehow switch you off now. <laughs> <laughs> you with your friends now. You don't wanna be with me. You see uh, that yeah. type of thing. What about the the gold diggers? Oh. Okay. What 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 do you mean by gold diggers? The ones that use you for your money. 
You must get the ones like church girls. Go <laughs> and use you for your money and all those things. <laughs> okay, this is the guy's perspective. What, what would you say? How would you know that this is love? Well, so like if he provides, not in a, like a gold digger type of way, but for example, where you lack, he provides, and where he lacks, you provide. So, like, it doesn't have to be half and half, or like the girl does nothing and the boy, like it needs to be equal. And then there's loyalty, trust, and also, like, don't imprison each other. Like, if you're in a relationship, don't just, you need to be with me now. You're with me. You can't go chill with your friends and stuff. Like, because that's also where some relationships fault because you're imprisoning the person and they're looking for freedom by someone else. So you, you're saying that, uh, uh, notice that, that everything you guys have said, you cannot be a selfish person and say you love. Because love by, ve by the very nature of it is unselfish. It's a giving up of yourself and your own rights. You understand? And a lot of times, uh, 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 women are women are de women are designed to be receivers. That's how God made you. You are a receiver. Men are designed to be givers. But at the same token, it shouldn't be a one-way stream. You understand? Uh, 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 a woman will will give you back what you've given her, but she gives it to you multiplied fashion. <laughs> uh, for example, uh, you buy groceries. She takes the groceries and gives you a hot meal. She just took raw materials and made it something exceptional. She said, yeah, this is how God made it. She, 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 uh, when, uh, when a husband gives his, his, a woman his microscopic seed, she gives him a baby, a human being. Her capacity to take what, what you've given her, give it life, multiply it and give it back to you. So here's the thing, guys, a powerful tip. If you frustrate her, she's going to give you multiplied frustration back. Because <laughs> she's going to take it, give it life, okay. and give it back to you. Okay. But, but I, I, I like what we, we understand now, and we're going to build in, in, in the next sessions, we're going we're gonna to really get into, into God's requirements. We're going to talk about dating. Is it biblical? We're going to talk about... It, uh, how did they date in, in biblical days? Is it relevant for today? Those are the kind of issues we want to get into. But for now, we, we dealt with our definition, and I don't want to get too deep. We are together that, that if someone says, if, if I say I love my wife, I must go home every night. I can't say I love her, but I don't give of myself. I can decide, okay, now I'm going to go away for three weeks now with my homeboys. I'm gone. And you see, you, you see, love must be visible. Okay, now, there's attention given. There's provision given. There's, there's a giving up of self. What did Jesus do? The ultimate demonstration of love is when you do something for someone you love, even when you don't want to. Jesus was in that garden sweating drops of blood and he said, if this cup can pass from me, Lord, I know I must go to this cross. It's going to be the worst experience of my life because I'm going to die for these people. Is there another way? And then the Father says, there's no other way. He says, well, because of my love for you, Father, and for them, I'm going to do this. He gave up his own rights in what, what he's, he felt. But I'm going to do this because I love them. So in a relationship, any type of relationship, we're not just talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, we're talking about the different types of love we were talking about. That there has to be a giving up of yourself. And not always getting your way. You, you, you make allowances for one another. If you start becoming that type of a person who's selfless, I'm telling you, you become extremely valuable. You, you, you become a pleasure to be with and to be around. The difference between popular people and unpopular people is that 
Popular people never talk about themselves. Unpopular people. How are you today? You know, I don't feel so good today. Uh, uh, the dog had a runny tummy, and then ish, the man, they give you their sad story, and it's all about them, how they feel. I'm not happy. I, you're going to make people run away from you. Because the minute they see you, they say, Oh, you come near and let them see you all. You understand. But if, why are some people popular? The only reason they're popular is because they make you feel good. When you come into the presence, say, hey, who's that? Yeah, like most quiet one. You understand that? Like, you look good today. You, you always feel so encouraged, and then you just want to be around them. It's again, it's an unselfish thing to do. And, and that's how you can start practicing in your life about, about how am I going to treat my friendships? Is it just about me? Are you the boss in the friendship circle? I'm a man, I don't want evil do. I don't think, I want to go here and I must just follow. I want to go, hey, you are nasty, you need to stop that. Give other people, what do you want to do? And don't also be like, I don't know, what do you want to do? <laughs> you know, some people are like that, you, you must lead them all the time. I don't know, what do you want to eat? I don't know, but when I buy this stuff, and you're like, I didn't want that. <laughs> you understand? So in your friendships, in your relationships, if you learn to have an uh, 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 an outlook of how, how can I better this friend's life? How can I be of service to them? Your life will change dramatically. You become a better person. You'll be happier. Because joy comes when you release. Flowing water never stinks. There's always life in a river. But a dam that's closed up starts have you, ever, have you ever left a bucket of water for a while? How does it look like after a while? And then it starts breeding maggots and stuff. So if you want to have demons all around you and harassing you, become selfish. Don't control your relationships. Be a giver and watch how your mother loves you more, your father loves you more, your friends love you more. And everyone will be like, this kid is amazing. And all you did was a simple thing of, I'm not going to be selfish. I'm going to always try and, and uh, better someone else's life. Amen. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> you lost you word, so many Anka. questions earlier. What happened? <laughs> lost of word, Anka. You lost. I'm, I'm fine, bro. Okay. Are you, are, you, are you with me? So, so we're gonna, it's going to be very exciting. We'll be going to go in the, in the next few weeks. For now, those of you watching us, we've laid a nice foundation. And we trust that you will tune in next week. And then as we build, we're going to pick the brains of these young people and see where they're at. And at the end of the day, we want them to know exactly what God requires. And, and, and once they establish what God wants then you're going to know how to conduct your life in such a way that honors Him and protects you. So everything God does is for you and my protection. If God says don't, it's not to spoil your fun. It's protecting you. I want to close with this story. There was this fish in the bowl, swimming in his bowl, and he saw the cat in the house, and he said, why must I be so restricted here? I want to be free like the cat, and he jumped out. The cat, I think. What happened? He's out of the water. He died. And See, cat, so... I, don't, I think that was a vegetarian cat, but anyway. <laughs> but, but here's the point. The, the, the fishing bowl, the water was his protection. And he thought is his restriction. So when God says don't, it's not the restriction, it's your protection. So now you think you're smarter than God. I don't limit me. I want to do what I want to do. Then you jump out, and then what happens? You burn yourself, you get hurt, you get wounded, you make the, a dumb decision that can alter the trajectory of your life and alter the, your future and derail you and cause you to have all kinds of delays because you wouldn't listen. So you're not going to be that stupid, are you? You're going to be smart. So we're going to look at what God says and then we're going to take it from there. Thanks for tuning in. This is Kingdom Couch Talk. And we'll be back. God bless you.